In the second week of the Cisco Introduction to Networks course, the students get to console into a switch and a router and put in just the basic configurations. So I have a list here of the basic configurations from week two, and I'll put these commands in the description at the bottom of the video. Let's go over a few right here. So when you first log into the router, you're presented with a prompt that looks like this, and that's called user exec mode. If you want to exit out, you can type in exit and hit enter, and you'll exit out of the router. The first command that I want to mention is the question mark. It'll give you a list of all of the commands that are available in that mode. So right here I have a, a console connection to the router, and I'm in user exec mode. I put in a question mark, and I get a whole page of commands that are available in user exec mode. I can press the space bar for the next page and the next page. So those are the commands that are available in that mode. The next command is the enable command. The enable command takes me to privileged exec mode. So now I'm in privileged exec mode. In privileged exec mode, I put in the question mark and I get a different set of commands that are available for this mode. And as you get deeper into the router and go to the higher levels of configuration, there are more commands available to you. Look how many commands were available in privileged exec mode. So for privileged exec mode, if I want to go back to user exec mode, I type in disable, or I can exit out of the router completely if I type in the exit command and press enter. So now we've covered those two. And oh, I made a mistake here, I'll change that. So notice how the prompt changes from the greater than sign in user exec mode to the hash when you're in privileged exec mode. All right, the next command that we're gonna cover is configure terminal. Configure terminal will take you to global config mode. Global config mode is where you do most of the configurations on the router. Once you get into global config mode, you put in a question mark to see all the commands that are available. You can exit back to privileged exec mode or type in the end command and hit return to go back to privileged exec mode or put in control C or control Z. So let's do that right here. I'll type in configure terminal and I'm put into global config mode. If I put in a control C, I'm brought back to privileged exec mode. If I type in exit, I'm out of the router. All right, we'll go back in, enable, privileged exec mode, configure terminal. Notice if I type configure and then put another question mark, I see what commands are available with when the first command is configure. So there's configure confirm, configure memory, configure network, configure, and then there's configure terminal. If I put in a command halfway, let's see I type T-E-R-M uh, and put a question mark, it'll tell me what the rest of the command is or what, what commands are available that start with T-E-R-M. All right, now I'm in global config mode. Now from here in global config mode, once again, I can put in a question mark to get a list of commands that are available in this higher level of configuration. And I can also go to a higher level of, or a different level of global config. If I put in line VTY zero to 15, I go into config dash line mode. It's here that we can configure virtual terminal connections for Telnet and SSH or we could put in line console zero and put in configurations to uh, on the console port on for uh, consoling into the router. So two options here, let's take a look at them. So I'll back in the router here, I'll put in line VTY zero space 15, and now I have access to 15 virtual terminal lines. Notice the prompt turns from config to config dash line. If I type in line console zero, I'm now still in config dash line mode, but I'm ready to configure the console zero, which is my serial connection port. All right, let's go to another one. Another sub global configuration mode is interface configuration mode. For that, you type in interface then the type of interface, in this case it'll be interface gigabit ethernet 
And if you have a 4321 router, you're going to be putting in interface 0 slash 0 slash 0. If you have an older router like I have, 1941, it's just 0 slash 0. So we can put that in and go in there and then run a bunch of commands. Let's just check it out. I'll put in interface GI and then use tab completion or let's see here GIG yeah, one, one more gigabit well actually that's not working so I'm trying to do tab completion to complete the command but since I'm in config dash line mode it's not tab completing the command because it doesn't see this option this is not an option in config dash line mode so let's try that again but this time I'll type exit go back to global config mode and then put in interface GIGA and hit tab and the command is auto completed all right so then I'll put 0 0 slash 0 enter and now I'm in config dash IF mode ready to configure my interface so the other thing I wanted to tell you that's pretty uh, important is the show commands. So I'm going down here now in my commands that you need to know for week two. And here we are in privileged exec mode, configure terminal to get to global config. Next thing I'll say is the show commands. There are lots of show commands that will show you information, uh, static information about how uh, the router is configured or what's enabled. So to, to put in those commands, we put in, first I'll need to go back to privileged exec mode with control C, and I'll put in show, and then a space and a question mark. And then these are all the show commands that will show me information about the router. Okay. Now, probably the most important one to know about, notice all of these show commands, there's quite a few here, but in control C. Whew. All right, probably the most important one to know about is show running dash config. And I can just do show run for short because there's command shortening. I can hit tab to finish the command, or I can just type the abbreviation here, show run, and then hit enter, and it auto completes the command for me. So tab completion is something you'll see in Linux and Unix and even in Windows in the command line, but command shortening, not so much. So that's pretty awesome that you can do that. So once I do a show run or show running dash config, this is the default configuration that loads when the router loads. It has some of the default commands or some of the things that are automatically enabled. For instance, the host name is router. What else? licensing information the interfaces this is important to know as you can see this router has a gigabit interface with no IP address and the interface is shut down interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 notice the other gigabit interface is also no IP address and shut down by default then I have serial interfaces which I've added to the router with a serial card those are shut down there's an HTTP server that's not running because of the no in front of it a web interface um, and my line console 0 which has no configurations and the line VTYs here 0 to 4 and the other lines are 5 to 15 this means that multiple users could telnet or SSH into the router at the same time so these are the basic configurations. So right here under privileged exec mode, we have the show, show running config. You can also save the configuration by doing a copy running config to startup config. This copies your configuration, which is running in RAM, to the startup config file, which is in NVRAM. Other things that you can do in privileged exec mode is you could ping another host on the network. You could run a trace route to a host on the network. You could secure shell into a host or telnet into a host. There's also debug commands. If you want to see all of the debug commands that are available, you just put debug space and a question mark. The difference between the show commands and the debug commands is that the debug commands are running in real time. Another one that you want to know is how to set the clock and how to restart the router. 
So these basic commands are covered in week two. If we go and type configure terminal and go into global config mode, we need to know how in week two to set the host name of the router, set up a banner message of the day, and then put your message between delimiters of your choice. In this case, I've used double quotes. The enable password will, will put a password on your ability to type enable and get into privileged exec mode. In this case, if I type enable password class, then the word class will be the password to get to privileged exec mode. This password will not be encrypted. If I put enable secret class, it will be encrypted. Let's take a look at that right now. I'll go in here. I'll go into global config mode and I'll type enable password class and then I'll type enable secret class but I have to change the password one two three four five so this is two different passwords to get to privileged exec mode the enable secret will take priority over the enable password. So the enable secret class one, two, three, four, five. So I'll do that. And now if we look, exit, at the running configuration, you can see right here in the running configuration with a show running dash config, the enable secret has been hashed with an MD5 hash signified by this five. The enable password is class, which is in plain text. Now what happens when you do that? It means that, well, if I do a control C and I type exit, I'm brought out of the router. If I want to go back to privileged exec mode, I type enable and I'm asked for a password. Let's see if I can type in class. Class doesn't work because the enable secret took priority over the enable password. So class one, two, three, four, five, and I'm in. The other thing that you can do is put in global configuration mode, the, the command service password dash encryption, which will put a basic type seven password encryption on all basic clear text passwords on the router. The other thing you can do in global config mode is go to the virtual terminal lines, which we already talked about, the console, and go into the interface gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. This, these two commands take you into config dash line mode, and this command takes you into config dash IF mode, into interface configuration mode. So all of these commands are needed in week two. Let's take a look and enter a few of them here. So what if we do go into line VTY 0 to 15 or into our console line? We can put in a password into the router. Let's say password space Cisco, where the password is Cisco. We can also enable login so that, although since there's a password, but also enable the login prompt so you're prompt to log in. And in the line VTY 0 to 15, we can set the transport input to all Telnet, SSH, or none if we want to set up uh, a remote access into the router using Telnet or SSH. So to give you an example of that, I'll go here. I'll put in conf t, which is short for configure terminal, and then line VTY 0 space 15. I'll put in the password Cisco and then login. If I want to make sure that Telnet is available on this router, I can say transport input Telnet or transport input all, and that would work for Telnet and SSH. If I want to put a password on line console zero, I'll say line console zero. Even though you can't see the difference, I'm now in line console zero. So now also I'll use up arrow command history 
put in password Cisco and login. Now, if I do a control C and then exit, I'm out of the router. I press enter and I'm prompted for that global password. I'll put in the password Cisco. Obviously, you're not going to use simple passwords like Cisco in class. You're going to use more complex passwords, but this is just a basic entry level configurations, just getting used to the router and the switch. For setting up our interface and getting Gigabit Ethernet 0 to come up, we put in the command interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0, or we can abbreviate it to interface G0 slash 0 slash 0. In my case, since I have a 1941 router, it'll be just G0 slash 0. I'll then put in this IP address and subnet mask, and then use the no shutdown command to turn on the interface. So let's give that a try. Enable. Class is the password. Oh, no, it's not. Class 12345. There we go. Conf T, command shortening to get to global configuration mode. INT G0 slash 0. Abbreviate the command interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 to just INT G0 slash 0. And then put in the IP address. I'll put in the IP address 192.168.0.1 with a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask and then the no shutdown command to bring the interface up. So the interface is now up. I'll need to uh, it change state to down because I don't have the ethernet cable plugged into my laptop uh, and plugged into the router. I have the ethernet cable just the other end, one end's in the router and the other end is just dangling. So that's why it's down. Okay, so now if we go back here to, well, before I do that, at the router, a couple of other commands, let's just test them out. Host name, R1, banner MOTD, no unauthorized access allowed. which will show up when we connect to the router and putty. We'll get, when we try to log in, we'll get the banner message warning us that un, no unauthorized access, no logging into the router if you're not allowed to. Maybe you'll be prosecuted for that. And the other thing here, we can also put in the service password-encryption command to encrypt the non-hashed passwords with a type seven uh, hash and some of these other commands that you're supposed to learn in week one. Well, we'll I won't do those right now. To talk about the switch commands, notice the switch commands, everything is the same here, except on the switch, there is not a gigabit zero slash zero interface. Routers have interfaces, switches have switch ports. So if you wanna put an IP address on the switch, so you could, let's say, remote into it, the command is interface VLAN one, and then you put the IP address. So once again, on a switch, the IP address goes on interface VLAN one, which is also known as a switched virtual interface. It's a virtual interface where all of the switch ports, if they're in VLAN one, you could plug into the switch and you could ping or reach the switch, let's say remote into the switch, uh, through any switch port that's in VLAN 1. And that's if the IP address is in VLAN 1. All of these other commands are the same, pretty much, these basic commands on the switch. So we'll go down here. Notice the only difference here. Interface VLAN 1, we go into interface configuration mode. We put in our IP address and then the no shutdown command right here. And then the other thing you could do is you could exit back to global config mode and give the switch a default gateway because the switch will need a default gateway to reach remote networks that are not, or networks that are not on its own uh, local network. So if you want to remote into the switch. Some other helpful commands that you'll need in week two, no IP domain lookup is very useful. You, you can put it in the router or switch in global configuration mode. 
and it prevents mistyped commands from being translated by DNS. And oftentimes, we don't have the router online, we don't have DNS configured, so if you mistype a command, it thinks you're trying to translate, translate that name to IP address, and then it just kind of waits and waits and waits. The other command that's useful is putting in the logging synchronous command so that um, logs, logging information that goes to the console, sometimes it interrupts your command right in the middle of when you're typing a command. If you put in the logging synchronous command in the line VTY or the line console zero, it will help that while you're typing the command, it won't send that output to the screen at the same time. Anyway, I'll put all of these basic commands in the video description, and now you have just kind of a rough introduction to some basic command entry on a Cisco router.